as 2021 rages on, we are all realizing very quickly that we are living the real life squid games as inflation is hitting rates that most of us have never seen in our lifetime. And for some reason in the US, the only way to buy a house currently is to sell a kidney and partner up with your three best college friends in order to afford a down payment. Somehow still more affordable than housing in China. And the cold hard reality is, side hustles are no longer a hobby done by the workaholics that are our friends. Suddenly we're all finding ourselves opening up Etsy shops and starting YouTube channels just to make a little extra money so we can afford our ever inflating rent. Before you go onto the dark web to sell your right kidney or go to some form of sugar mama site to find yourself a sugar mama, Let's go over five side incomes that I currently am doing actively and how much they're each making, especially if you're out there as a data engineer or software engineer, these are going to be very relevant to you because I think some of these stand out more than others. Even if some are a little more generalized, I think that if you can bring in kind of your expertise, technologically speaking, uh, there's a lot of extra money to be made in multiple areas. So let's dive into the five side incomes I'm currently putting time and effort into. Starting of course with medium, let's dive in. I am sure if you're in the technical field, you have come across many Medium articles. And the truth is some people do make a decent amount off of Medium. My best month was definitely upwards of the range of $3,000, but I've definitely kind of come down from there as it's not been my main focus in terms of side income. But let's dig into some of the details on a monthly basis, like what exactly am I making and you know where is it all coming from? So if we go into Medium, you can really just create an account and not need to pay anything and start writing today and immediately start making money if, again, your content does well, which I've definitely seen some people immediately right out of the gate have thousands of claps. So it's definitely possible if you have a unique content or a unique spin on even rewritten or kind of rehashed content. So it's definitely a great place to at least start in terms of making a side income because unlike YouTube where there's a lot of effort, I think, to get noticed and you likely need to buy a lot of content and work on doing other skills besides just the writing aspect of it or in the YouTube case, filming. You've got aspects like in theory, lighting, audio, uh, film editing, and so on. In this case, you really just have the writing and editing portion of the work. So this is a great, I think, first place for many people to start, but let's dive into kind of my numbers. So if I were to go into the medium partner program, which is where you'll see my numbers, uh, you'll see kind of two numbers currently that exist. The minimum guarantee is kind of new. Uh, I don't think everyone's currently getting this. Typically, you'll just get paid kind of based off of views per month. So you'll see that below here, I'm getting paid off of views per month. So these are my upcoming earnings for this month. But you'll see that now I have an October's minimum guarantee, which is something new that Medium is trying to figure out and test out. So basically, if I write at least four articles, they'll give me $1,000, regardless of how well they do, which is kind of nice because then I can be a little more creative and not feel like I have to be writing for views, but I can be a little more experimental and not focus purely on, you know, creating clickbait content. What is a more recent development is this referred member earnings kind of section. This is at least what I'm going to assume is Medium's way to try to compete with people who are starting to do newsletters. So for example, I've started a Substack, and we're going to talk about that in my next kind of point here shortly. But because things like Substack allow me to actually make money continuously, regardless of how many views I get, and it allows me to own the basically viewer a little more, like I get emails immediately. There are a lot of benefits that writers are finding in creating newsletters versus kind of writing on more of a platform. Because again, we have a lot more ownership, we have a lot more say, and so that's why I think Medium has tried to put this as an incentive to kind of say, hey, if people sign up for Medium based off your content, we're gonna give you a cut of it. So almost similar to a subscription, but in this case, again, you only get about half of it versus where Substack will give you a bigger portion. Now, the difference here being is that Medium also brings you the audience, whereas Substack, you're gonna to have to build it. So there is some difference there. It's not like you can just write for Substack and there's automatic readers uh, on Medium. If you write good content, people will likely see it. So that's kind of one of the differentiators here is like, yes, Medium doesn't give you as much, but regardless of if you have an audience or not, someone will see it. Whereas, you know, Substack, you have to build up a base of emails and so on. And so there is a trade-off in both worlds. But at the end of the day, you'll notice that I'll make about $1,000 this month, a little bit more thanks to those referred earnings. And if we go back in some previous months, you'll see it's about that consistent where it's somewhere in the range of a few hundred dollars to maybe a thousand dollars a month depending on what I'm writing about, depending on how often I'm writing. So there's definitely a connection between how often you're writing, what you're writing about, writing that perfect piece of content that's going to kind of hit a home run. There's just a bunch of different kind of things that bring you to that bottom line. 
Enough about Medium, let's jump over to Substack. For those of you unfamiliar with Substack, it's essentially a newsletter platform. Basically, I can put together a newsletter here, and then from there, I can just send it to all of my readers. It's also kind of like a blog post where it can be found like by like Google Web Scrapers. So you're not limited to only kind of connecting this to your kind of email list, which sometimes was, I think, a limitation of some other email tools. But in this case, it can be found through a Google search. And that's kind of really nice. Here I have about 21 subscribers that are actually paying with about 4,000 plus uh, people who have signed up. And for anyone who's signed up through this YouTube channel, thank you so much. I do appreciate that support there as well. From the subscribers, I do make about $100 a month. But on top of that, I have recently started to get sponsored. So this is going to go up to about $1,200 a month, which is great. That's really kind of my goal. My goal is to kind of get this up a little bit further. So now it's actually kind of competing with Medium in terms of how much I can make. And I assume as you know my subscriber list grows, I can kind of up the amount for sponsorship. Um, this is another trade-off, I think. Medium is very kind of anti-ad at the their core, which again, I understand their goal is to kind of create that very pure content experience, which again, I can appreciate, but it really does kind of take away from the creator's ability to make maybe extra income. And again, that's why I think medium is trying to compete at that level currently because they, they realize that, you know, content creators need to have other ways they can make money. So they're trying their best from other ways. So if you add the thousand dollars from medium and the $1,200 from Substack, I'm likely going to make about $2,200 alone from these two sources. So that's gonna cover my rent and a little bit more. That's really great that, you know, again, my side income sources at least cover my rent. But now let's talk about my biggest side income source, which is consulting. Consulting or freelancing is another great way to make side income as long as your company allows it, especially in a world where technology is getting more and more complex. Really, there's so many specialties that you can consult in. There are just a lot of opportunities for you to look into ways you can consult. I mean, again, in technology, you've got front-end development, back-end development. You could work on Spring Framework or something like ASP.NET. You could do like computer vision or NLP, data science, data engineering, data modeling. There's just so many different ways you can kind of approach consulting or freelancing because so many people have problems in the data space or technology space that you probably have some skills that you can either use for freelancing or consulting in the future. And I think it's worth considering. And let me just take a quick pause. If you're out there and you'd like to see more consulting content, let me know in the comments below kind of maybe what questions you have. I've kind of occasionally put out content in that area. I think I'm definitely at a place where I can start providing advice kind of in that area as I've kind of learned a little bit more about setting up things like pipelines in terms of future customers, as well as partnerships and relationships and other things that you're gonna need besides your technical abilities in order to make sure that you've got a somewhat thriving consulting business. So if you have questions, do post them below and I would love to answer them. One of them that I won't answer right now is essentially how much I'm making from consulting for multiple reasons. It's just not something I want someone to be able to reverse engineer and possibly figure out things like pricing and things of that nature so that some future client can't look back at this video and think that I'm either overcharging or undercharging or whatever it might be. But I think consulting is a great way to make a side income because one, it challenges you to figure out totally new skills. Trust me, you're going to learn along the way. And two, it forces you to kind of approach new problems constantly. You know, whatever you're doing at work, yes, you might be learning new problems, but maybe you're stuck on one technology stack and you really wanna try out some new ones or maybe just figure out some new ones. Well, a great way to do that is through consulting because that's all you're really doing is constantly finding new ways people have set up things like GCP or AWS and figuring out maybe the best way and the worst way that some people have set it up in the past. And so there's a lot of learning even in that alone. And so that's why I really like consulting is because at the same time you're making extra income, you're also being forced to constantly learn quickly kind of new setups, new environments, maybe even new tools that you can apply your skills to. And from that perspective, it really is a great source of side income. Let's turn our attention to the question you probably are all asking. Ben, how much money can you possibly make off of 11,000 subscribers on YouTube? Because my next side income source will be this YouTube channel. So let's dive in to answering that question. If you haven't seen this page, this is my YouTube page. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe take a quick moment to like and subscribe to this channel. So let's answer the question, how much do I make off of 11,000 subscribers on YouTube? And we can do that by clicking manage videos. I'm not gonna hide anything here. I'm not gonna like wait for you or force you to watch until the end of this section to figure out how much I make per month about. Here's the answer, at least currently, in the last 28 days, I've made about $432. Or if we look back last month, which would probably be a better read, would be currently 
Last month, I made about $465 on YouTube. Looking back to May, you know, I only made about $212 and now we've over doubled that uh, coming into September. We'll see where things go, but first off, thank you all for supporting me throughout this whole time as I've been learning how to make kind of better videos. I'm still kind of working on slowing down speech. It's very difficult, but I have also, as you can see, recently updated my backdrop. So I'm really trying to make this content primo for you guys because I appreciate all of your support and your views. And if you're curious on which videos have made the most recently um, in the last 28 days, it's definitely this data engineering roadmap video. Uh, being a data engineer, uh, realities and expectations has been the highest kind of consistently performing video for a long time. I think data engineering roadmap has been the one thing that's kind of surpassed it, which is kind of cool because it means I think that I'm making videos that are slightly better slowly. It is still hard to make videos that really kind of sing. For example, I thought my <laughs> seven VS code hacks was going to be great. But I think one of the mistakes I always make when I do code is I forget to zoom in and you guys are probably all trying to actually read what I'm typing for my final side income source. We'll discuss affiliate links, which maybe some of you are familiar with the concept of affiliate links, but basically all it is, is there are links usually on my YouTube channel that are connected with some sort of unique ID that when you click on it and go to something like a Udemy course, or maybe some sort of Coursera course or data camp, they know that you came from my video or maybe some content that I put out. And then if you happen to purchase that class or course, or maybe a few days later, purchase something else and haven't used someone else's affiliate link, then I will likely get a small percentage of it, which for anyone who's been out there and has used those links and supported me, Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I hope none of you have bought a course just to support me. But if you did buy a course through those links, I really appreciate it. Uh, last month, we made somewhere upwards of $800. I think that's because I put out the data camp versus data quest video, which did pretty well. And you know, you could actually track it with the links that were being clicked that you guys clicked a ton of them. And I got about $400 from that alone. And then about three to $500 from Coursera and Udemy. So that's been growing steadily as well. And arguably I think faster than even my YouTube money as probably most YouTubers that aren't Graham Stephan or someone that puts out content on finance. We don't make as much per video or per click or per view. So it's always great to have these like side income sources that are still somewhat connected to our content or videos where we can make a little extra. So for those of you who are great at math and have already added up all of my side income sources besides maybe my consulting, you'll see that I'm making about anywhere from 3,500 to 4,500 a month, which is one of the reasons I borderline hate side income only in terms of the fact that that's basically another person's income. And I feel like as millennials, we almost have to make that amount so that we can afford houses or anything else in this world. I mean, at the same time, I guess we're also deciding to spend $30 to get a bowl of pho delivered to our door. But I mean, you know, it's the small luxuries in life. And I think we've all earned it, right? Right? Before you go, I would love to know the side incomes you're currently testing out. I'd love to know what's working, what's not, what you think is completely crazy and will never work, you know, like MLMs or maybe what you are currently doing like house hacking and you feel like is genius. I've seen people currently making four to five times their mortgage currently through Airbnb, just because Airbnb is currently having a pretty good kind of ROI but I'd be curious to hear what you're currently doing to make some side income. So do share it with the community below and I will see you guys next time and goodbye.